Hello. Today we're going to go through a question whereby you can use a scale drawing to find the resultant force where you have two forces that are not acting in the same along the same axis. So, this question here we can see we have a man with an electrical bi bicycle that has a driving force of 3 newtons east. Um, however, the wind has a force of 4 newtons north. Find the resultant force. So these are at right angles to each other. Now we can use some something we know about the maths of triangles to help us with this question. So rather than drawing the two arrows coming from the same point like this, with the north, uh, the four newtons north and the three newtons east, that's not as useful to me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to top and tail them. Top and tail. And by that I mean I'm going to put the tail of one of the arrows so that it touches the top of the next arrow. Now to do this I need to firstly make sure that I draw them to scale. Um, unfortunately my ruler is missing any sort of graduations on it um, so I'm gonna have to slightly guess at the scale here but when you're doing this with a proper ruler it's simply making sure that you know that say that you're using one centimeter to mean one newton or or one millimeter to mean one one newton, whatever is appropriate to the numbers given. For this question, I'd probably take one centimeter on my ruler to being one newton. So you have to make sure you draw the arrows the correct length. The other thing is you have to make sure that you don't rotate the arrows. So I'm going to start with our wind of four newtons north. So I would draw carefully, reading off the side of my tape of my ruler, I would draw a four centimeter line straight up to represent the four newtons uh, magnitude of this force. And down here, that's our starting point. Or rather, that is our, our man on the electric bicycle. Then I take the next arrow. Now, in our original free body diagram, that arrow would go somewhere like that. Probably not the same size, but would be in that location. Now, what we want to do is take that and put the tail of that arrow to the top of the previous arrow doesn't matter in the slightest which way around you do this. I could have started with east or north and it, I would get this exactly the same result. So I'm going to draw that arrow in now. So making this arrow three centimeters long and ensuring that here I have a right angle because by saying that one is going east and the other is going north, the question is telling me that those two arrows, those two forces are at a right angle to one another. So I've drawn in my second arrow. And now, so this one was four newtons and this one was three newtons. And obviously with my carefully measured scale diagram here, that's really four centimeters and three centimeters. To find the resultant force, all I have to do is draw a straight line from the beginning of both of the, both of the uh, vectors, the force arrows, to the end of both of the, of the force arrows. So here's my here's my vector. I'm going to draw it in pink so it shows up nice and clearly. There we go. Okay. Now if I wanted to know the magnitude of this force, then I would get my my trusty ruler. I would measure it in centimeters, and I would find that this distance here was five centimeters. So judging by my scale, five centimeters is a force of five newtons. So I know that the resultant force of these two separate forces acting is five newtons. And the last thing I can do, because I've drawn this all very carefully to scale, I can get a protractor, which unfortunately I don't have at home, um, but I can get a protractor. If I line this up here, I can measure the, the size of the angle between this uh, this arrow and this one, and I'll find that, that angle is 37 degrees. Now, obviously in our example we've got east and north, so perhaps I'd rather give that a bearing, but I could use a, a compass with bearings marked on it to compare 37 degrees to a uh, north, northeast, or whatever it may be. Okay, well, I hope that's helped. Uh, we will practice some questions like this next lesson. Um, Obviously, normally, it is helpful to do this on squared paper or graph paper, but as long as you're using 
a real ruler rather than one that's just spray painted black, um, then it's more than possible on plain paper as well. Hope this has helped. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments or come and see me at school. Goodbye.